Okay, welcome back. Um, to continue on, we are solving radical uh, radicals, but in order to talk about them real quick, we have to talk about some key features. So look at the graph of the following function. Really what I want you to do is identify these key features. Can you, can you do that? I hope you can. So here's the graph, pause, look at all this information. Here's another one, I hope you pause. Can you identify those key features? Okay, if you're not doing this, if you're not pausing to identify these things, then you know when it comes to the exam and you're struggling, then I'm gonna put you back on this video and remind you, this is where you should have learned that information. Because key features at this point, those are old concepts, you really should know them. Okay, but how do I actually solve a radical? In order to solve a radical, we're gonna follow some simple steps. You're gonna isolate the radical. So anything that's not a radical, you throw it to one side of the equals, leave the radical on the other side of the equal sign. Then you're going to get rid of the radical. Well, how do you do that? You do the opposite of what a radical is. So if it's a square root, you square it. And if you square one side, you have to square the other side. If it's a cube root, you cube it. If it's fourth root, you fourth it. You know, if four, raise it to the fourth power is what I meant. Then you're going to finish the solve. But the final step we have to do is check for extraneous solutions. And what that simply means is you're going to end up with answers that when you plug it back into the original equation, don't create real solutions. So if it doesn't create a real solution, that means that that was an extraneous solution. So you do have to, you have to actually check every answer when you do these. So here is a solve radical. Just to recall those steps, we are going to isolate the radical, get rid of the radical, solve the equation, and check for extraneous solutions. So the first thing I want to do is isolate the radical. So let's look at all of our terms and figure out whether it's going to go to the left of the equals or the right of the equals. So I've got 2x. Well, that's not a radical, so I'm going to leave it to the left. I've got the square root of 100 minus 12x. Well, that is a radical, so I'm going to leave it on the right. Then I've got negative 2. Well, that's not a radical, so I'm going to move it to the left. So let's go ahead and move that negative 2. So we brought our plus 2 over. Now we have to get rid of that square root. Well, how do I get rid of a square root? I simply square it. And if I square the right side, I'm going to have to square the left. So that's what it looks like. Now recall, we cannot distribute exponents. This is not going to become 2x squared plus 2 squared. This is actually going to have to be foiled out. You're going to have to see it as two different sets. So I went ahead and wrote it out for you. Recall over here that this square is going to get rid of the root, but it is not going to get rid of anything underneath. You still have to do that. So we foil this out, do a first outer inner last or box method or how, whatever method you learn to figure this out. So I foiled that out and we're still left with this. Here we start combining like terms. And really, if you recognize it, isn't that a quadratic function? Well, to solve a quadratic function or any polynomial, really, we're going to get everything to one side so we can set it equal to zero so we can solve for that x, don't we? So I'm going to bring over that 100 and I'm going to bring over the negative 12x. So I combine those values and I get it equal to zero now. Well, great. So I simplify, I solve it down and guess what I can do now? Can't I factor out? Well, the first thing I want to factor out is real simple. I can factor out that four and get it down to simpler numbers. Then I'm going to factor out this 24 to figure out what values get me that five and we get x plus eight and x minus three. Now I can set all of that equal to zero. Well, this four is extraneous, right? There's no x, there's no variable to associated with it. So that's kind of extraneous. We're not going to write 4 equals 0. But we could set x plus 8 and x minus 3 equal to 0. So there you go. And now I simply finish my solve. That becomes x equals negative 8 and x equals 3. Are we done? Not quite. We've only hit step 3. We isolated, we removed the radical, we solved, but we have not checked for extraneous solutions. Here's the most important part. We're going to take those values and plug it back into the original equation. So here's my original equation. Here are those values. I'm going to take and then I'm plug them in. I did them simultaneously on both sides so you can follow along. And I, go, I keep on going. And I drop the equal sign because at this point I'm checking. Are they equal? They're not going to stay equal unless they are actually equal. So I continue on. I continue on. I continue on. And now I get down to the fact that negative 16 does not equal 12, but 6 does equal 6. So that tells me one of these is the extraneous solution. Probably this one over here since it didn't work. And that's the correct answer. The only answer to this was x equals 3. Okay, here's another one, um, you know, follow along, isolate the radical, remove the radical, solve an extraneous solution. So I'm going to go through those real quick. So, of course, we're going to get rid of that 14, bring everything to the right side, keep my radical on the left. Now, how do I get rid of this cubed root? Well, I cube it. So if I'm going to cube the entire left side, I have to cube the entire right side. Well, I don't have to worry about 50 minus 14 cubing it separately. We can simplify 50 minus 14 to 36. So we cube it out. Then I, this cube removes the root, but it leaves everything below it alone. So that still leaves me with x minus 5 squared. Whoa. 
What did I do? Did I do something funky? Ah, I see what I did. Okay, so we're left with, so really, if we wrote that question in between, we are left with, where'd my pen go? No. Okay, we are left with x minus 5 squared equals whatever 36 cubed was. I don't know, 4 something, 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 something. Then how do you get rid of a square? Well, we square root. So that's where that square root came from. Okay, we square root that value. And we square root this side. And I plug it into a calculator. I'm not going to do that in my head. And so I got the, the value was 216, and that equals x minus 5. Well, we cannot forget that when we square root something, we actually have to consider the positive and negative value because any even root is going to give me that plus minus that you guys are used to seeing. Why can't I forget this? Because I haven't finished my solve. I still have to add 5. So when I add 5, I have to do both answers, not just one. So positive 216 and negative 216. And this is where I get two solutions from. Okay, now we're still not done. We still have to check the extraneous solution. So I take those values and I plug them back in. So here we go. Here we go. At this point, now they look exactly the same. Since they look exactly the same, I'm going to go ahead and finish that solve. Well, 50 does equal 50. So that means both of these are the correct answer. I've got some examples for you if you want to pause and do them, but this is pretty much the video. So uh, solve these radical equations, and that's pretty much it. So here's example one. Example number two. Example number three. And example number four. Oh, there's a lot more in here, guys. I did not realize. Well, I'll just shift through them. If you want to pause, you can do them. Okay, fantastic. We will see you next time with polynomials.